In this problem, we have a car traveling in the y direction and a bus traveling in the x direction. They're on an icy road, so we won't consider any friction here. When the car is unable to stop at an intersection and ends up impacting the bus, we're told that the impact at point A, so the corners impact, and that this is the plane of contact. at theta equals zero, which means that this direction is the line of impact. We're told that the impact at A is completely plastic, so the two edges of the vehicle stick together, and we're asked to find the angular velocity of each vehicle just after impact, so state two, after we've been given initial linear velocities for state one. So this is a bit of a more complex problem. It's gonna take us some time, but it does have some real life applications, um, specifically in areas like accident reconstruction, when engineers are trying to figure out um, how fast vehicles were going based on the evidence at a crash scene. So, the only impulse acting on our two objects is going to be the impulse between the two objects at point A. So if we consider the system, we're going to have conservation of momentum. So that's both linear and angular. for the system because that impact impulse is internal. It's between the two objects in the system, so we don't have to consider it. So we're given the dimensions here. I'm going to just sketch them in. 9 meters, 2.5 meters, this is 3 meters, and this is 1.5 meters. We're told the car is going five meters per second and the bus is going 10 meters per second. So let's talk state one. This is just before impact. So we'll have the car, let's draw that a little lower. The car has VC1 in the Y direction. The bus has VB1 in the X direction. We're told these are constant and density objects, so their centers of gravity are in the ge geometrical center. And they're not rotating, so we can see omega B1 equals zero, omega C1 equals zero. They're just moving straight. So we can calculate both the linear impulse, so we can calculate both the linear momentum and the angular momentum for the system, and we'll need both equations. So the sum of the linear momentum at state one over the system is the linear momentum at state one for B plus the linear momentum equals the linear momentum for C at state one plus the linear momentum for B at state one. And these are fairly simple. For C, we have MC VC1 in the J hat, and for B, we have MB VB1 in the I hat. Great. Now we can figure out the sum of angular momentum over the system, and because everything's internal, we could pick any point. I'm going to pick point A at state 1. And we're going to say that's the angular momentum about A for
for the car at state 1, plus the angular momentum about A for the bus at state 1. Now these two objects are moving linearly. They're not rotating, but because we're taking angular momentum, we have to take them about the same point for both objects in order to sum them up. Because we're taking angular momentum about a point, which is A, that is not their centers of gravity, they do have angular momentum. So let's work that out. The angular momentum about A for the car at state 1 is going to be I of the car, omega of the car 1. Well, omega of the car 1 is 0. So we don't have to worry about that term. And then we get the distance from C to A, where C is the, C, is the center of gravity of the car crossed with mass of the car, velocity of the car at state 1. So if we put in the numbers for this, we get minus 0 0.75 mcvc1 in the k-hat. And you'll note we, we only need the x direction component here because our velocity is only in y direction and an uh, j times j, or j cross j is 0. Great. So now we can write the angular momentum about point A of the bus at state 1 is going to be similarly I of the bus, omega of the bus at state 1, that's 0, plus R of the bus with respect to A, B with respect to A, cross MB, VB1. And if we do that cross product, we get minus 1.25 mbvb1 in the k-hat. Just be very careful with these cross product terms and their directions for this one. So we can have, we'll have our two equations or two expressions of momentum. So the angular momentum of the system about A at state 1 is minus 0 0.75 mass of the car, velocity of the car at state 1, minus 1.25 mass of the bus, velocity of the bus at state 1 in the k-hat. And if we put some numbers into that, we get minus 107,500 in the k-hat. Sum of the system. Uh, for the linear momentum at state 1, we're going to get mbvb1 in the i-hat plus mcvc1 in the j-hat. And that's going to be equal to 80,000 i-hat plus 10,000 j-hat. Cool, we've got state 1 handled. Now we need to do state 2. State 2 is going to be just after impact. So what is that going to look like? We're going to have our bus and our car. They are now stuck together at A. So we're told that's plastic. They're stuck together at A. The bus is going to have some velocity of the center of gravity of the bus at state 2 in the y direction and some velocity of the center of gravity of the bus at state 2 in the x direction. It's also going to have some omega b2. I'm going to set it in that direction. I don't really know, but we'll just pick a direction for it. Similarly, the car is going to have some velocity of the car at state 2 in the y, velocity of the car at state 2 in the x, and some omega c2 will pick that direction. So we're just assuming that omega b2 is minus omega b2 in the k-hat, and omega c2 equals omega c2 in the k-hat, and the math will tell us if we're right or not about those directions. So we're going to write the sum over the system 
of the linear momentum at state 2. So now we have linear momentum in both directions, both i and j, for both objects. Again, we just picked those directions. The math will tell us if we're right. mc vc2 in the x plus mb vb2 in the x in the i hat direction plus mc vc2 in the y plus mb vb2 in the y in the j hat direction is our expression for linear momentum at state two. Then we can write the sum over the system of angular momentum. If we want conservation, we have to pick the same point for angular momentum. So that's point A at state two. That's going to be the, the sum of the two momentums for C and B at about A for state two. So C two plus K about A for B2. Let's write what each of those are. C, um, for C2, we've got IC omega C2, which is now non-zero, plus R of C with respect to A cross MC VC2, where C is the center of gravity of the car. And we can write that out as I C omega C2, we pick that as a positive, plus 1.5 MC VC2 X minus 0 0.75 MC VC2 Y all in the K hat. So I've done out that cross product without writing it out explicitly, but you should be able to find those components and multiply them. K A B2, so for the bus, that's gonna be I of the bus, omega of the bus squared, again, non-zero this time, plus R B with respect to A, cross M B, B B2, where B is the center of gravity of the bus. And we can write that out as minus I B omega B2, we pick that in the negative direction, minus 1.25 MB V B2 X plus 4.5 MB V B2 Y all in the K hat. Just as a reminder, we're talking about this distance and this distance to get the cross products for these two, and this distance, and this distance for the cross products of these two vectors. Great, so now we have our expressions for linear and angular momentum at state one and state two, so we can write conservation of linear and angular momentum from one to two. So we'll write in x, remember these are vectors, so we we'll should get three equations out of this. In the x direction, initially only the bus is moving in the x direction, and that equals mbvb2x plus mcvc2x, and we already figured out that was 80,000. That's going to be our equation one. We're going to look in y. We're going to find MC VC1 equals, because of course only the car is moving in Y linearly prior to the impact, equals MB VB2Y plus MC VC2Y, which we already figured out was 10,000. That's our equation two. And then we're going to look about A. That's going to be angular momentum. We're going to know the expression Ka1 is going to be equal to the other side, Ic omega C2 plus 
mc vc2x minus 0 0.75 mc vc2y minus 1 point, oh, sorry, minus ib omega b2 minus 1.25 mb vb2x plus 4.5 mb vb2y and we figured out that uh, that would be equal to 107,500 and that's going to be equation 3. That's a negative 107,500. Great, so we have three equations but then if we look at our unknowns we're going to see that we have vb2x vb2y vc2x vc2y omega c2 and omega b2 so we have six unknowns we need three more equations next we're going to look at kinematics to find some of these relationships so since the impact is plastic And we're told it's purely plastic. VA on the bus at state 2, it has to equal the motion of VA on the car at state 2. So they connect at those corners and they don't come apart. They have to move together. So A moves together. So we can write expressions for point A on the bus and point A on the car, relate them to some of the other values that we know and, and set them equal to each other. We get VA on the bus at state 2 is going to be equal to VB2, that's the velocity of center of gravity of the bus, plus omega B2 cross RA with respect to B. RA with respect to B is going to be minus 4.5 I hat minus 1.25 J hat. So. Our A with respect to B is going to be this one. Our A with respect to B. Great. So we're going to write that out as VB2X in the I hat plus VB2Y in the J hat plus 4.5 omega B2 in the J hat minus 1.25 omega b2 in the i hat. Next we'll look at the car. VA on the car at state 2 is going to be vc2, the center of gravity of the car, plus omega c2 cross r a with respect to c. If we come up here, r a with respect to c is going to be this vector. So we can write that as VC2X in the I hat plus VC2Y in the J hat minus 1.5 omega C2 in the I hat plus 0 0.75 omega C2 in the J hat. Oh, I forgot to write out R. A with respect to C is going to be 0 0.75 I hat plus 1.5 j hat as I showed earlier. Now we can set VA equal to VA. It's plastic and moving together. Great, and so in the i hat we're going to have VB2X minus 1.25 omega B2 equals VC2X minus 1.5 omega C2. We're going to call that equation 4. In the J hat, we're going to find we have VB2Y plus 4.5 omega B2 equals VC2Y plus 0.75 omega C2. That's equation 5. 
we have no new unknowns, but we still have six of them. So we need one more equation. So let's come and look at this situation again. So our additional equation can come from one of the two um, objects looked at on its own. So if we consider the bus, it's got an impulse, a big impact impulse right here. And so we expect its momentum to change in Y, but not to change in X. So we'll have impulse momentum in Y, but conservation of momentum, of linear momentum, in X only for the bus. Just if you're curious and you want to look at the car, we get the same equal and opposite impulse here on the car. So we also have conservation of momentum in the X direction for the car, but that's just going to be zero equals zero. It wasn't traveling in the X direction linearly prior to the impact. So the one we're going to get is for the bus. So if we look at state one for the bus, we've got VB1, omega B1 equals zero. And then at state two for the bus only, we have some VB2X, VB2Y, some angular momentum omega B2, and this big impulse here. But because that impulse is in J hat only, linear momentum is conserved. in I hat for the bus. So we can say that VB1 equals VB2X. And that equals 10 meters per second. We're given VB1. This is our sixth equation. Now we have six equations and six unknowns. We didn't add any unknowns with this last equation. So then we can solve. Solving this is going to take a good amount of time. I'm going to uh, solve it out fully here, but you're welcome just to skip to the end at this point or consult the PDF. All right, solving. From equation one with equation six, we're going to get that 80,000 equals MBVB2X plus MCVC2X, but we know VB2X equals VB1 equals 10 meters per second. So we put that in, we get 80,000 equals 8,000 times 10 plus MCVC2X, and we get that VC2 x equals zero, which we could have gotten here if we did linear momentum of the car zero equals zero. Okay. From equation two, we'll have 10,000 equals 8,000 VB2Y plus 2,000 VC2Y, we're going to divide that expression by 2,000 to get it just simplified a little bit. 5 equals 4 VB2Y plus VC2Y, and we're going to get an expression VC2Y equals 5 minus 4 VB2Y. From equation 3, adding 1 and 6, 
we're going to get minus 107 500 equals IC omega C2 plus 1.5 MCVC2X. We found that one was 0. Minus 0 0.75 MCVC2Y. minus IB omega B2 minus 1.25 MB VB2X, we know that's VB1, plus 4.5 MB VB2Y. We're going to get expressions for I of the car about its center of gravity is 1 over 12 times 2,000 times 3 squared plus 1.5 squared. Those are the dimensions of the car. And we get it's 1875 kilograms meters squared. IB, so uh, mass moment of inertia of the bus about its center of gravity, 1 12th times 8,000. 9 squared plus 2.5 squared. Those are its dimensions in meters equals 58,167 uh, 58, kilograms meters squared. So our expression above becomes minus 107,500 equals 1875 omega C2 minus 1500 VC2Y minus 58167 omega B2 minus 100,000 plus 36,000 VB2Y. And we're going to just simplify that a little bit by taking that 100,000 to the other side. We're going to get minus 7,500 equals 1875 omega C2 minus 1500 VC2Y minus 58167 omega BC, sorry, omega B2, plus 36,000 VB2Y. Great. So we're working through equations 1, 2, and 3. Now we're going to look at equation 4 with 1 and 6 added. We can see VB2X, we know that's VB1 conservation of momentum for the bus in the x direction, linear momentum, 1.25 omega b2 equals vc2x, we know that's 0, minus 1.5 omega c2. So that is going to be 10 minus 1.25 omega b2 equals minus 1.5 omega C2. So we've got a nice equation of just omega B2 and omega C2 there. Now we'll look at equation 5. We've got VB2Y plus 4.5 omega B2 equals VC2Y plus 0 0.75 omega C2. Now we've got good expressions for our five equations and we're going to start subbing them in a bit more. So if we look at 3 and 2 together, we get minus 7500 equals 1875 omega C2 minus 1500 and now we're going to sub in 5 minus 4 VB2Y minus 58,167 omega B2 plus 36,000 VB2Y. So now we've got the two omegas and VB2Y. We'll simplify that a little bit. 7,500 equals, oh, 7,500 plus 5 times 1,500 equals 1,875 omega C2 minus 58,167 omega B2 plus 36,000 VB2Y 
oops, 36,000 plus 4 times 1,500 VB2Y. These actually cancel on this side. It uh, ends up being 0 equals 1875 omega C2 minus 58167 omega B2 plus 42,000 VB2Y. And then we'll take um, equation 5 and add equation 2 and we get VB2Y plus 4.5 omega B2 equals 5 minus 4 VB2Y plus 0 0.75 omega C2. And that gets us 5 VB2Y equals 5 minus 4.5 omega B2. So we're putting those VB2Ys together on one side plus 0 0.75 omega C2. We're going to just uh, divide by 5. So VB2Y equals 1 plus 4.5 over 5 omega B2 plus 0 0.75 over 5 omega C2. And then we'll take that equation 5 and sub it into equation 3. And we'll get 0 equals 1875 omega C2 minus 58167 omega B2 plus 42,000 times 1 plus 4.5 over 5. Sorry, that's supposed to be a minus. My apologies in both cases, omega B2 plus 0 0.75 over 5 omega C2. Great. We also have another expression for omega B2 and omega C2. We're going to sum these up together, and then we'll have two expressions with those two variables only. So we're going to move our constant on to the left hand side minus 4200 equals 1875 plus 6300 omega c2 minus 58167 plus 37800 omega b2 and that gives us minus 42000 equals 8175 omega C2 minus 95967 omega B2. Our second expression is 10 equals minus 1.5 omega C2 plus 1.25 omega B2. We're going to multiply that by 5450 because that gives us that gives us 54 500 equals minus 8175 omega c2 plus 6812.5 omega b2 so we're going to take this one and this one and add them together and eliminate omega C2. We're going to get 12,500 equals 0 minus 89154.5 omega B2. We can solve that for omega B2 equals minus 0 0.140 radian radians per second. Uh, and then we can use our equation here to find omega C2 is 1 over minus 1.5 times 10 minus 1.25 omega B2. Right up there we found that. And that's minus 
radians per second. So we can see that the minus sign tells us we got both directions wrong when we looked at our in, uh, objects initially. And our final results are omega b2 equals a positive 1.4, uh, sorry, 0.41 positive 0.14 radians per second in the k hat direction and omega c2 equals a negative 6.78 radians per second in the k hat that's what we were looking for so if we think about how these vehicles remove they're connected at a this one's going to move this way omega c2 and we can imagine that if we've got our impact force here, uh, and this is initially not rotating, you can see that um, it should rotate in the direction shown about its center of gravity. For the bus, it's not as clear because we would think that it would rotate uh, opposite to what we've shown here. What we've seen, we see it has a small rotation, rotational uh, velocity in the direction of the positive k, but it's likely that whatever velocity at a is just a little below, um, just a little below the line to point b, and as a result, it's going to. Uh, rotate in the direction shown. So the velocity at point A is going to be dictated partially by the velocity of car C at point A, and we know that the relative velocity V A with respect to C has to be in that direction. So we can see it's kind of plausible. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.